This is why romance books are fun to read. Or maybe they're not fun because I'm falling in love with fictional men and fictional men <sighs> They don't meet the marks of real men. Well, hello, people of the internet. My name is Kevin, and welcome back to another video. So, for today's video, I am really excited to be doing a video where I read books that TikTok have recommended to me. So, as you guys know, TikTok or BookTok is a very ever growing platform. It is huge, literally, everyone is on there. I'm also on there. If you want to follow me on TikTok, it's just Irish Reader. I post TikToks every now and again, and I love that platform. It's such a fun and silly, goofy time. So definitely go follow me over there if you want more content from me. And obviously on that platform, there is a niche section on there called Book Talk, where people are talking about books. Similar to how BookTube works, except it's just on TikTok. On there, books get very popular very quickly because it's such a quick video process, and like the hype gets out there. Everyone's recommending books, then the books blow up, everyone's reading them. And so I have picked books that TikTok has recommended to me. These are books that have popped up on my For You page several different times. I will include TikToks that I constantly get about these books. So they're gonna be inserted now. Yo, bro, who got you smiling like that? Like, kill the light, so baby, close your eyes. I'm just gonna tell you about some of the books that I've read recently, and one of them I'm just gonna kick straight into because I'm so nervous is the Midnight Library. Um, this one here is probably like my favorite fiction book of the whole year. It's almost like that's, it's almost like that's the whole point. And so I was like, you know what? I need to read these. So that's what I'm gonna do. Also, me and my friends have all done this together. Everyone else has already uploaded their videos. I'm just very, very late because obviously I was in London and I was doing things over there and stuff. So I just didn't get a chance to film it yet, but I'm filming it now. So Chloe, Caitlin and Jamie's videos are all already up. So I'll link them all down below. You should go check out all their videos and see what books they read. I have one book in common with Caitlin and Chloe. So I'm really excited to see how this is gonna go. So we're gonna start off with the one that I have in common that I also have seen this just everywhere on TikTok. Literally, this is like the number one romance book I see everywhere. And it's not even just TikTok. I see it on literally Instagram. I've seen it so much. And I was like, what is this book? I need to read it. And that is The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. And I am very excited to read this one just because of how much Caitlin and Chloe have loved it, how much TikTok loves it. Like, I think I also am going to love it, so I'm really excited. So basically what I believe this book follows, it follows two main characters that don't like each other, so it is enemies to lovers, and I believe also has the fake dating trope, because our main character sister is getting married in Spain, I believe, and she needs, like, a, someone to go with her to the wedding. So she ends up pretending that she's in a fake relationship with one of her colleagues, who she hates, and they go together as, like, a date for the wedding. So I also assume that Maybe they're obviously gonna properly fall in love. Everything's gonna happen. Like, I'm just really excited to see where this is gonna go. I'm ready to feel single. I'm ready to meet Aaron Blackford. He's apparently the main guy character, Aaron Blackford. Even that name, that's such a stunning name. So I'm already so excited to dive into this and see what I'm going to think. The next one that I have is one that I honestly think this is probably one of the most hyped books on TikTok. This and The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, but I've already read The Song of Achilles, so I couldn't use that one. These two, oh, also this, They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. That's another very popular book on BookTok, but I've also already read They Both Die at the End and The Song of Achilles. I love both of them. And then this is the other one that I see all of the time and it's literally in every bookshop and like when you go into a bookshop and it says book talk recommends it's always on the table and that is the midnight library by matt hay and this is just literally been everywhere i've seen so many people love it i've had my patreons especially amanda tell me that they love this so much and that they recommended it to me so i really trust everyone's opinions and i really do think i'm going to like this one i think it's also going to be a cathartic read because i think it deals a lot with like mental health but also like the main premise of this book is that this main character who's on her last day and on her last night she gets the chance to go to this library where she can like live all of the different lives and like see what would have happened if she did certain things differently throughout her life. So it's kind of like a butterfly effect kind of moment. And I just am really excited to see where it goes. And also just the thing on the back that just says like the one stunning thing. It says, which raises the ultimate question. With infinite choices, what is the best way to live? Because if you have infinite choices to change things that you did, what's the best way to do it? And like, I feel like it's going to be like, 
everything happens for a reason. I think that's going to be like the main like take from the book. And I'm just really excited for that because that's something I really stand by that like everything happens for a reason. I'm looking forward to this one. I also see a lot of people cry when they read this. So I feel like I'll probably will cry. Like I'm not hard to make cry. I cry like really random things at times. So won't be surprised if this makes me cry. And also this copy was actually bought for me by my friend Yudum because we went book shopping when I was in London and she recently read it and she was like, Kevin, you need to read it. And I was like, I already, I was planning on reading it because I keep getting recommended it on BookTok. And then she was like, no, I need, I'm buying it for you if you need to read it. So Yudum, if you're watching, I can't wait to read this. So yeah, I'm going to go start the books right now. I think I'm going to start with The Spanish Love Deception because I honestly think Chloe and Caitlin may kill me soon if I don't read it. So we're going to do that and, you know do what is needed in the world. So I'm gonna start with this one and I just can't wait. This is gonna be such a fun time and let me know if you've read any of these books down below and let's just get straight into the vlog. Okay guys, so I have started The Spanish Love Deception <laughs> Ball of Fence. Aaron Blackford. A few moments later. I, I feel like I'm a meninist right now. So like if that gives you anything like I'm already in love with him. The way the author is like just already describing like everything like the movements like when his voice drops and gets deeper even just like his physical appearance the way she's describing him it's just hitting already the way he's speaking to her right now and he's just like you need me. I know you need me and like she's like no I don't when he's like <laughs> Yeah, you do. I'm like, oh, okay, sir, that's a bit too much. And then even at the start of the book, like the first line, I'll be your date to the wedding, stunning. But then like it literally says after that, words I had never, not even in my wildest dreams, envisioned coming out of his mouth. Wildest dreams, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift version, exactly. Like that just played in my head. And now like, I'm just like literally seeing Aaron, like, oh my God, I'm literally the trend on TikTok when it's like, me meeting Aaron Black for the first time and it just turns to me going, you see me in hindsight? Literally me! Like, I'm literally that trend right now. <music> the power of literature. I'm gonna continue, but wow already, already has potential five star vibes. Okay guys, so I'm up to page 156 of the Spanish Love Deception and I am obsessed obsessed with this book. I just read a moment that like, it was too much. Too much. Too much. I literally had to stop. I was like, nah, nah, nah. That's a joke. Like, that's not allowed. Basically, I can't say like what's happening because that would be a spoiler. But if you've read the book, you're probably gonna know what I'm talking about. Page 156, if you had read it and you would like to turn to your books and turn to that page, we're going to the bottom of it and it says, this is not a spoiler so I can read this out so it's fine. Just when I thought it was physically impossible for Aaron's body to fold around mine anymore, for our bodies to come any closer, he dipped his head further and possibly low, his lips hovered directly above the shell of my ear. There are a few things you don't know about me, Catalina. Also, I just realized that, man, that makes it sound like they're having sex or something. They're dancing. Imagine just dancing with like this stunning man and then like you're doing like a little dance moment, like the little dip and then he comes down to your ear and he's just like, there's a few things you don't know about me yet. Like, sorry. That's honestly too much for me to think about and I actually can't. This is a joke. I'm so single. It's fine. The main thing with this book is that the author really gets the movements. Now, when we look at the trajectory of my progress with obsessing with the movements of people, this has been a very slow process for me because at first I never really paid attention to the movements. However, since discussing it further with us, with Caitlin, Chloe and Jamie, I've soon come to the conclusion that movements are really important. In this book, the author literally describes the movements so often and I never really noticed it much in other books, but like she is literally telling us every movement that he makes. One of my guilty pleasures is like a boy does something where he licks his lips. I'm gone. And that's happened in this book. And like she literally specifically mentioned it in like detail. And I was like, is this a joke? It is. And there's just so many parts where like all of the movements. I actually just can't cope. Elena gets it. Elena really does get it. Anyways, I'm going to read more. It's also like... I think maybe 2 a.m. almost at this point and I'm getting very tired so I'm gonna probably finish this chapter and then go to bed but like 
I want to consume this all, but also I don't because I don't want it to end. Okay guys, so I am now up to page 202 of the book and I'm about to start chapter 12, which apparently is a really good chapter because Chloe was like, oh my god, exactly that you're on chapter 12. So I think I'm going to vlog some of my reactions as I read chapter 12. But also I just wanted to mention, like obviously I'm still enjoying the book, really loving it. Like there's nothing new there in terms of my thoughts. But one thing I need to say, Aaron Blackford is stunning, but Christian Grey wishes he was Aaron Blackford. When you're reading this and you're just like, this is what Christian Grey thought he was, but like, he's not. And it's just, yeah, he's just so beautiful. Like the way he's described and everything, it makes me really want to have a boyfriend. Insert the clip of Chloe saying, this is a sick joke. The sick joke right here. Because it is a sick joke. Anyways, let's go to chapter 12. A few moments later. This is a joke. <laughs> I was... I was expecting... Ooh, ooh. Page 207. If you have this book, go to page 207. That is what I'm reacting to right now because I... <laughs> I'm not okay. I, I wasn't prepared for that. I, I, I was not prepared for that. This is what I mean. This is what Christian Grey thought he was. This is what Christian Grey thought he was. I actually can't. What is this? What is this? <sighs> this is why romance books are fun to read. Or maybe they're not fun because I'm falling in love with fictional men and fictional men. <sighs> They don't meet the marks of real men. This is devastating. Okay guys, so I'm up to page 309 and I'm about to read chapter 19. This chapter I've heard a lot of things about. Well, actually I haven't heard specific things like what happens in it or anything, but from Chloe's vlog, I've seen her like freak out over chapter 19. And from Caitlin, I've seen Caitlin freak out over chapter 19. So I know chapter 19 is a good one. So we're gonna keep the camera rolling so we can get my reactions. <gasps> This is a joke! Page 318. I'm not okay. I actually can't. I can't. Good girl. <laughs> this is a sick joke. You are actually so right. Like, it literally is a sick joke. What is this? It's the biggest sick joke of all time. It really is. I actually can't read. Now, nah, what? This is a joke. What a joke, what a joke, what a joke. Ooh, I need to pull a Caitlyn. What a joke. Is it just the best of all time? Literally. Hello everyone. So it's been, I want to say nearly a week since I have last updated this vlog. And I just took a bit of time off because mentally was not doing great. So I just take a step back from vlogging and stuff and I did. But I have finally finished reading Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas and five out of five stars. It was just such a good book. Like it had so many things that I loved. Like I've already said, I can't, it's been so long since I vlogged, like a, a week since I vlogged. I can't actually remember what I've already said. So I really hope I'm not repeating myself because no one wants to hear me repeating myself. Loved it, loved like the slow burn, loved like the fake dating, loved like the I hate everyone but her. It was just so cute. Aaron Blackford, it's just ridiculous because he doesn't exist. I want an Aaron Blackford. We all deserve that in our lives. The moments when they finally got together were such stunning moments. I couldn't breathe. It was just so good. So TikTok definitely got it right with this one being so popular all over TikTok. It deserves it. And it's getting traditionally published now as well, which is really exciting. Love that for her. And yeah, I am just really excited to read the next one because I think there's gonna be like a, not like a direct sequel, like it's gonna follow another book with two characters that you see in this. Very similar to like regular romance books. If you remember like Get a Life, Chloe Brown and stuff, then the next one follows like Chloe Brown's sister. 
Same kind of thing, that's what the next one for this is going to be like. And I'm just excited because it does mean that I'll get to see Aaron again because I'm sure he'll pop up in the next book again. Even though he's not the main character in the next one, but he might pop up. Can't wait. Yeah. Five out of five stars. Loved it. And now I'm moving on to reading The Midnight Library. It's not that long. It's only like 200 and 208 pages. So I'm going to fly through it. So let's just dive in and see why this is so popular. Will I love it? Who knows? We shall see. I'm really looking forward to it. I know it has a lot to do with like depression and stuff like that. So we shall see. We shall see. Also, this lighting's getting very intense, so love that. Okay, guys, so it is nighttime, and first of all, I would just like to say I'm well aware that this is probably, like, the weirdest angle I've ever vlogged. I <laughs> was gonna, like, sit up the vlog and, like, be all, like, oh my god, I'm awake, but you know what? I'm not awake. I'm in a silly, sleepy... <laughs> Silly sleepy mood, not silly sloopy mood. Don't know what that is. I just made that up as a new word. Sloopy. So when you're feeling goofy and sleepy, you're sloopy. Anyways, and I have been reading the Midnight Library today. I've actually gone up to page 102. I read quite a lot of it and I read it really quick. I'm, I'm really, really liking this so far. Like the story basically follows the main character of Nora who dies and basically she goes to this Midnight Library, which is like between life and death. And in the Midnight Library, you get to look at a book full of your regrets so everything that you regretted in your lifetime and you look at all the different regrets and then you get the chance to look at books and read the story of what would have happened if you didn't live that regret like say for example if I had a regret that like I wish I had have pursued something else and I didn't then like you can choose oh what was what would my life had been if I had have done that and that's basically what's been happening so like the main character at one point like at the start of the book we find out like she didn't get married to this guy she separated from him and then like when she goes to the minute library she's like okay what would have happened if I actually stayed with him and you find out all this different stuff what her life would have been like and it's really really interesting so far I feel like there's gonna be a lot of life lessons when in this book and just one already that really blew my mind and like I don't know why it blew my mind so much and it just really resonated with me was the one about regrets there was a whole section I don't want to say it because it is kind of a spoiler and I would just say if this is a book based on the synopsis I just gave you and you think oh that sounds interesting I would just say give it a read. It has similar vibes to, I want to say, A Christmas Carol. And you know, like, how, like, all the ghosts of Christmas past bring Scrooge around and, like, show him different things. That's basically what this is. Like, you get to live all the different lives. It, like, it reminds me of that. Obviously, it's weird because, like, it deals with depression and, like, the main character, like, dies from suicide. So, like, it is dark and, like, has those deep topics, but it also has this sense of hope when I'm reading it right now, and, like, it's a weird one. I don't know how to explain it unless you've read it. You just might understand what I'm saying when I say that. But, like I was saying, back to the regret thing, I kind of just went on a little tangent there. Basically, we find out that sometimes you may regret something in life, but it's actually not something that you should regret. And that's kind of like a life lesson that Nora learns in the book at one point. She kind of goes through something and then realizes, oh, like I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have regretted that. Like that's not something I needed to regret. Yeah, it just made me think then about myself because like there's so many things in life that I think I've regretted. But like when I think about it now, I'm like, no, I actually don't know if I do regret that because like it taught me something else. Yeah, like that's just the message it's saying. And like that's something I've known for a long time. Like you learn from your regrets, but then sometimes your regret isn't even a regret. <laughs> if that makes sense. I feel like I'm not making sense. When I read that, like it just it really resonated with me. It made me think a lot. And I just think that as the book progresses and more and more times, that she goes to into different lives to see what would have happened. She's gonna learn something each time and then that's gonna like reflect on just like you as the reader reading this. I'm just, I'm really liking it. I am excited to read more of it and honestly might finish it tomorrow because like I said, I'm on a page 102. There's only 288 pages, so I'm almost halfway through the book. So I might finish it tomorrow. Okay right, guys, so it's the next day and I'm up to page 172 of the book now. Still really enjoying it. But there is just a section on page 168. If you've read the book, you can flip to that page and know what I'm talking about because obviously I don't want to say anything without spoilers. There's just this guy and like he's supposed to be drunk and he's calling this new Nora in her new life. And 
he's just saying things because like they're like this relationship that they broke up he's like drunkenly talking to her clearly he like still is obsessed with her but like she broke up with him for a reason and everything and just everything he's saying like i'm literally hearing it in my head in this like funniest just tone i just have to enact it in the way i'm hearing it so apologies because i'm gonna be calling an american accent so yep sorry to anyone who might think this is an awful accent but this is just how i'm hearing it so i have to go with it he's like we had all kinds of great but you were right to finish it you did the right thing in the cosmic order of things there is no rejection there is only redirection you know, I've been thinking a lot about the cosmos and I've been tuning in and the cosmos have been telling me I need to get my shit together. It's balance, man. What we had was too intense and our lives are too intense. And it's like Darwin's third law of motion about an action leading to a reaction. Something had to give and you were the one who saw that. And now we are just particles floating in the universe that may connect one day at the Chateau Marmont. Like who is this guy what is he talking about like it's just like he's trying to be so deep and everything but he's clearly just drunk and like rambling to her trying to get like impress her and it's just not working and it's just so funny to me like the whole there is no rejection there is only redirection he really thought he was like having valid points by saying that and no. Okay guys, so it's actually the next day and I ended up finishing last night the Midnight Library and I really, really enjoyed it. I'm going to give it four out of five stars. I definitely really liked the message behind this book and I found that it was just really touching. I actually did cry reading it as well. I was just couldn't sleep last night. I couldn't get my brain to just turn off and so I decided to just read it and I ended up finishing it and yeah, I just was reading it and there's a chapter near the end where the main character is like saying all these things. I wanna, let me just say the page number just in case you guys wanna go check it out. So it's on page 277 and the chapter is called A Thing I Have Learned Written by a Nobody Who Has Been Everybody. It's that chapter and that page. And when I read that, I did tear up at the end of it and I cried. And yeah, I just, I really, really enjoyed it. I definitely can see why this is so popular and why it's so like, appreciated it by people online and stuff like I 100% get it and it just wasn't anything that was I was like oh my god groundbreaking so that's why I couldn't give it the full five stars but overall did really enjoy it it's definitely a book I would recommend to anyone who is feeling lost down depressed a lot of things if you're struggling just mentally I do think this is a book that's a really good one for everyone it can be a very hopeful book and just maybe help you in some way out there like for me i did read it and there was parts that i was like really connecting to and it did make me feel better and stuff but then there's other parts as well i think it's just a complicated one that like sometimes you read it and then you just kind of like get upset because you're like i wish that's how i felt and just all those different things and i had that experience at one point where i read something and i was just kind of like i wish that's how i was feeling but i'm just not there yet but we're all on different journeys all on different time periods so it's okay four out of five stars really, really enjoyed it and i would recommend if you are feeling like this is a book that might help you in any way so yeah definitely check it out okay guys so i'm actually going to end my vlog here and just before we go into the final wrap-up of this vlog if you really enjoy this let me know so i can do maybe a possibly a part two because i already have a book that I want to read for part two known as the love hypothesis because that has been everywhere on TikTok lately so I think I could do that for like a part two so let me know if you'd be interested in me reading books popular on TikTok part two I would love to know but anyways final thoughts of the books I would definitely say that TikTok knows where it's at with its popular books and books that it's hyping up because I love both of the ones that I read the Spanish love deception is now probably my favorite romance book of all time like literally I adored this book so so much and I've seen criticisms on this book of people saying like the start of it was too slow and stuff like that but I just did not have those issues I got sucked in from literally the first page and I fell in love with Aaron Blackbird instantly it's also been like two weeks or so since I finished this and I'm still in an Aaron Blackford hangover like I'm literally obsessed and I love this man just love him and I need an Aaron Blackford in my life and if you haven't read this yet 
highly recommend it and it's just so stunning so thank you book talk for this and then obviously the other book that i read was the midnight library by matt haig and i also really love this one too i once again understand why it's hyped on tiktok and i just really enjoyed it like four out of five stars from me for this one it just didn't have the full like oh my god wowness to it but i definitely understand why it's so popular i really really enjoyed it and i definitely would also recommend this to someone like i said if you're in the right headspace for it definitely would recommend and i also really want to see this adopted so yeah need that to happen they are the two books that i read that book talk recommended to me and i'm just so grateful that i read them also what is going on with like the lighting like it's literally so sunny outside but like i must be in like the shadow or like in the facing of the house where the lighting's just not hitting me because i don't know why the lighting looks like this because it's literally sunny outside but Anyways, that's besides the point. Regardless, I'm very happy that I read both of these and thank you so much to Book Talk for recommending them to me. So yeah, that is going to be it for this video. If you would like to see extra content from me, you can join my Patreon. It's always linked down below in the description. I feel like I haven't been mentioning it enough. So just a reminder, if you didn't already know, I do have a Patreon where I post extra content, such as monthly reading vlogs, where I read a book for our book club, which we decide every month what book we're gonna read. Then we read it together and we discuss it. And I do a reading vlog, spoiler filled about the book that we've chosen. I also do a monthly extra video that's only exclusive to Patreon, where we all get to vote what I'll do. So I've done before, I've done like cooking with Kevin videos, where I bake and cook something in a vlog just like day of the life vlogs stuff like that lots of fun different bonus videos over there there's like a year worth of content on my patreon because i've been doing it for more than a year now so there's a year worth of extra footage and videos over there there's also monthly live streams you get early access to videos that i'm putting on my youtube channel like lots of fun stuff over on my patreon and it's a really fun time so if you'd like some extra content from me it's always linked down below my patreon if you want to go check it out but yeah once again that's it for this video let me know your thoughts on these books if you have read them and also let me know if you'd like me to do a part two where I do this again, just with other TikTok books. And other than that, that is going to be it for this video. And I shall see you all next time in my next one. So goodbye, guys. Oh